Hey fans, Stray Benz is here today with a topic of fixing an oil cooler leak. And it's not really the oil cooler, it's the engine oil lines to the cooler of the engine. Uh, here's what we're talking about. And here we are, another car. And that's another new one on me. This line here. It's rusted through. I tried it a couple of times to locate it, the leak. Tried to locate the leak and it wasn't this fitting. It's tight and there's no o-ring in there. And just by reaching under, there's a small amount of leakage there. So I do need to replace this hose. That hose looks a little bit better, but not quite as crusty as this one here. But uh, and this little oil cooler here is actually in not too better shape for hanging out and getting sloshed with uh, salt water and stuff like that. So I need to counter hold. This was a 27 millimeter wrench, and I believe the nut is a 32. And trying to get a replacement is going to be not fun. To get better to it, here's the wheel off. It's a, uh, car supporter and jack stand. And it's a 300 SDA. And the lines are crusty. You need to first remove the black cover. There's a couple of sheet metal screws. Douse everything with WD-40 and here we have the fittings and they're not coming loose. So we're gonna have to cut this off, the hoses that is, and in order to get the cooler out. And then we'll see if and how we're gonna be able to make a substitution here for those hoses and fittings. That ought to be fun. Hello folks. Little did I know how much trouble these two fittings would be on this oil cooler. You can see how crusty the tubing and the uh, front fitting of the hose are. The hose is in awesome shape, but hanging out in the salt splash, even some were protected, didn't work. So that is one more thing going on. This is carbon steel and the cooler is aluminum. And those two metals over time will corrode because of the electric difference the material difference uh, causing electric type corrosion contact corrosion that is and uh well, needless to say that and being together for 30 years and having all kinds of that splashed against it wow hey, they, needless to say they were dead tight and even though and now you can see all right i was able to counter hold this but this would not budge so in the last ditch effort what you most likely will end up having to do is relieve some tension cut away enough that you just about nick the thread but don't kill it all the way and only then was i finally able to loosen this up the other one is is even in worse shape not even worth my showing so all good running fine but what to do next because the thread looked actually much worse. So here's what you can do. You have a couple of options. I went for using this die and it's M26 made with pride in China, M26 by 1.5. And those threads, once I, um, put a little bit of WD-40 or some, some lubricant on there. Those threads came out beautifully considering of how bad they looked <laughs> before. Now, there are a couple of options fitting wise because this is 18 millimeter tubing, metric tubing. And this whole thing is really what is, the brand name is Armito, Armido which is a European Parker brand. So you can get the this specific fitting and a, a piece of push lock hose here in America, but trying to get this fitting was darn near impossible and importing it from Parker 
would have cost uh, an easy 150 bucks a piece and non-stock for this old vehicle. Uh, I wasn't shoot shooting for being original, but at least I wanted to make sure that I could salvage as much as possible of the cooler. And that's hard to find. The uh, hose assembly, I believe is no longer made. At least I was not able to locate it. So a couple of different things what you can do. Uh, this is by the way, 5 eighths hose. So what I, I found a compromise in this. This is a fitting sold through an American company. And don't worry, I, I provide all the links to the companies that I used where to get some of these fittings. This is a so-called swivel fitting uh, with a half inch MPT thread. This is a brass uh, elbow a really short distance elbow because we don't have an awful lot of room this is about half an inch to almost three quarter inch taller than the original tubing uh, i hope it fits uh, but that that is the only choice that i had and then a half inch mpt here and this is a barb fitting made by parker for five eighths of an inch push lock hose i'll show you in a moment what that is and this is also uh, half inch going into this fitting so with that now I can finally put this bad boy back together I use Teflon tape for the threads up here I usually don't like thread locker because if that goes places where it doesn't belong in the engine good luck trying to get that one out so I'm going to tighten that in a moment counter holding it position it right this is the the push lock hose um, there you go, five eighths. This is actually the least expensive. This is made for fuel, for oil. Uh, the temperature is actually uh, right up there. It's made for that. You don't need hose clamps for it. Once you have put this on, on these fittings, these are special barb fittings that work with hose. This hose, you don't even need a hose clamp. And the same goes now from a transition pace. There's another fitting that I got from a Parker store goes into here the other one into the existing piece of tubing and on the on the black hose that's not push lock that's the only place where we need a hose clamp but that is about it one last option that you do have is drilling this out and putting in a half inch mpt in there the hole in here would work great for three eighths of an inch mpt problem is if the yes the thread works great but you're necking down the surface area of this fitting and with the om603 the problem that you're having is that the um there are so many oil nozzles inside you don't want to reduce and neck down the oil flow next up is the installation of the oil cooler Hey folks, <laughs> a night episode of Stray Benzes. This is now the cooler with the push lock hoses ready to install, as explained before. Uh, my son and I, we just test ran the darn thing. There's not a leak inside. Now we need to make sure that the plastic cover fits and if everything fits all right, I might give, and I, I let this run for a day or two to make sure there's absolutely no leak but uh, I might give that a coat of uh, black paint so this doesn't look like crap in the, in the next winter in the next winter but uh, that is how you can fix that happy wrenching